Okay, this is the bottom, I'm sorry, the top of the board. It has already been milled. These are milled with a very small V-shaped bits, as you can see here. Probably can't focus on these because they're very, very small. But as you can see there, my fingers are showing the reference of what they are. Basically, this is the top layer of the board. It has already been machined and there's registration pins right here and over here and what these do is give it a single axis of rotation so when I rotate the board around it's going to know where those items are and when it machines it it's going to line them up so as we can see here very small traces and these basically are just isolating where the holes are going to come through for the pins of the parts and in the previous revision of this board this little trace here was done with a jumper wire and there's a total of nine of those jumper wires that go across well now I'm actually going to do a double sided board for the first time so okay now the board has been flipped over and one thing you'll notice is that we have what looks to be the board is crooked but in actuality it's not in reference to these two pins it is totally straight and also reference to the the other side of the board you can't see where I'd already milled that earlier but these registration marks keep that aligned what we're seeing here is the drills holes that I put in here were not drilled precisely um, in reference to their location on the board so it when I rotate it around it came a little bit out of whack so should not be a problem we should be good to go um, we are now going to go over to the software on the control system and we are going to it's be very hard to hold this here the same and watch what I'm doing but we're going to change it over to milling the bottom of the board okay and once we've done that we're going to select all and add those to the item okay and it's automatically going to choose what tool it wants to do and we're going to go ahead actually the first thing we're going to do is move this to the exchange position and what that's going to do is command the machine to come over and home itself over here to the edge this is where we change the part the tooling and I will try to get down here so you can see the actual tooling. I'm going to move my light around a little bit better here. Okay. okay, so that's the exchange position. As you can see, you can look up in there and you can see the machining of that little part. It's the same part we did to do the top side of the board, so now we're going to come in to do the bottom side of the board. Things are going to get pretty loud here real quick and when I tell it to go ahead and start uh, I'm going to actually do a oh minus milling all oh plus and start and it's going to go over one of the things that we need to do is turn the fan on because when this is running it needs to have suction
now we're done milling the bottom and get in there a little bit and you can sort of see that's the whole circuit there um, and what we're going to start now is the drilling process now this is pretty amazing because we've got I think two maybe three different sized holes if you look at the software here I've started the drilling phase and it's asked me to put in a spiral drill at 0 0.5 millimeters now if you've never seen one of these drill bits, they're pretty amazing. Um, if we look at these, some of these bits that I have here, these are, these ones right here are .75 millimeters, and you can see with my, my finger as a reference there, they're pretty small. .65 is a little bit smaller. These are .90 they're getting quite a bit bigger. The 0.5 millimeter ones are not much thicker than a human hair. And if we look here we can see one. I don't want to take one out of here with one hand. I don't want to drop it. These are probably about five to ten dollars a piece and if you were to drop one of those you would definitely break it. Matter of fact a lot of these bits, even the bigger ones, if you drop them because they're so hardened they're very brittle so we can see in there now and focus is going to be very difficult but you can see that I've got the drill bit loaded okay so now we're going to start the process this is going to happen pretty fast and I'm going to turn my um, start the process here and we can see here that these are going to run at 52,000 rpm and that's one of the reasons that these drill bits are as resilient as they are because they're going so fast. I'm go over here, turn on my suction. I want to see how you can see how fast this is. You can never do these by hand this fast. You can see it just plunge down into the board. fast that quickly it drilled all those little one half millimeter holes and now what it's going to ask me to do is change out to the next size drill bit in this case it is that 0.9 millimeter so I will pause and now this is the 0.9 millimeter Now it's going to go to the next phase and it's asking for a one millimeter contour router. 
Now what it does is for any holes that it needs to drill that are one millimeter or larger, it uses a router bit instead of a drill. So a router bit is a bit, these here are two different sizes, these are um, both uh, one millimeter and two millimeter. So what it does is it actually, if let's say it's got to drill out a one and a half millimeter uh, hole, it will actually route it around. So I'll change those bits out. One of the things I did to this machine was when you change the bits out, this machine doesn't actually have a motorized z-axis. What it has is just a solenoid that um, we're over here in a safe area so you can see this whole assembly just pushes down and you can see that when it was drilling on its own. It doesn't really have a controlled z-axis, it just plunges down. What I found is because that's loose um, it's hard to change the bits so I, on my laser cutter I cut myself a little wedge that I stick in there and that locks that so I can change the bits easier. Okay now the one millimeter contour router is in place and we will start the next phase. I apologize for this noise but I have to do it. So you can see here when this one cuts you'll see it drop in make a small little movement Okay, now it's asking us for a two millimeter contour router. We've already changed it out, so we'll go watch the machine now. In this case, it's going to cut out the actual mounting holes. Okay, one of the things that this does when it's done with a phase is it does this very irritating thing where it tells you it's done but it dings a binger. Okay, now we are going to tell it that we want to do the cutting of the outside of the board. And once that's in, we're going to go ahead and start it. Now what's interesting is when we do this cutting of the outside of the board, as you can see right here that it's going to use that same contour router that it already had. Now it remembers that that's what's in the machine so it's going to start this process right off the bat. You can see there. Okay. What it's doing now is actually going to route out the entire board. We're done with the board. We're not going to cut it out of the actual um, circuit board. Here we have a completed circuit board. This is the first double sided board I've tried to do and unfortunately I must have got something slightly wrong. On this side the board looks perfect. All the holes, all the traces are really well lined up and everything but when we look at the other side of the board we can see that obviously we're way off with something 
and I'm not sure if that is um, must be something I've done wrong so we'll have to try it again till we get it right